In this integral, or excuse me, in this video, um, we are going to evaluate this integral. And we've already talked about a few possibilities um, for powers of secant and tangent. We've discussed when the power of secant is even and positive, when the power of tangent is odd and positive, when the power of tangent is even and there are no secants, and when the power of secant is odd and there are no tangents. Um, if all else fails, one thing that you can always do is write your tangents and secants entirely entirely in terms of sine and cosine. Um, and that often works. Um, at least it turns it into a problem um, that can be solved with the powers of secant or powers of cosine and sine that we discussed in our first video. Uh, I believe this is an example um, where, where it works. So let's try it. Remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So this is sine over cosine, both of them need x's, they both need angles, raised to the fourth, and then we're dividing by secant squared. Um, now if you want, you can write secant as one over cosine. Actually, I'm gonna do that here, it's overkill. You might be able to skip this step. And so I've got a secant squared, so that's one over cosine squared. Now you remember um, from algebra that dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. So most of the time if I'm in class I would skip this step and just write this numerator as sine to the fourth over uh, cosine to the fourth and then take the denominator, flip it and multiply. So I, I square the numerator and denominator here first so that's one over cosine squared then I flip it. So that's cosine squared um, over one. Um, and so we're here. I've got a cosine squared and a cosine to the fourth. So two of those will reduce and we still have a cosine squared there. And now we have this. Uh, now technically, and none of the rules that we talked about for powers and sine of co and cosine would work on this, but um, I might be able to solve it um, using some substitutions. So let's try it. Let's write sine squared as sine squared times itself. So I've got that. Now one possibility here is to write this as tangent squared times sine squared, but I don't think that really helps me, does it? So I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to try, well, I could write that sine squared as cosine squared minus 1 and then divide, but then I just end up with a 1 minus secant squared over there. So let's try that. So I'm splitting this fraction up into sine squared over 1 times sine squared over cosine squared. And then remember, sine squared of some angle plus cosine squared of the same angle is 1. So if I want to get this guy by itself, all I have to do is subtract the cosine squared from both sides. Oops. So I can replace this sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. All right. And that leads to sine squared x times 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared, and cosine squared over itself, which is 1. Hmm. Still not getting any further, am I? Sine squared x we can handle with a power reducing formula. Mm. Is that right? Uh, 
um, this uh, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared, so I've got sine squared over cosine squared right here, so that's tangent squared minus sine squared. And that's looking pretty good. And I don't have a rule for tangent squared, but we remember from before we can write tangent squared as secant squared minus 1. That should work. Hmm, I wonder if everything I did is legal. I hope so. I'll check my answer at the end. So we've got secant squared minus 1 there, and sine squared can be written as 1 half of 1 minus cosine of double the angle. So we could distribute the uh, negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 minus 1 half, so that's minus 3 halves. And negative 1 half times a negative is going to be a positive 1 half. Antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. This is a constant. We're going to have a constant times x. And for this last guy, the antiderivative is sine of 2x. And then don't forget the extra 1 half plus c. So I get this as my answer. Well, you might wonder to yourself, how on earth could we ever check that? Well, I guess we could take the derivative and see if through um, trigonometric identities we can prove that the derivative of this is equal to that tangent to the fourth over secant squared. So let's check. This might be a mess. I actually didn't work this one out in advance. I didn't work out most of these in advance. I wanted you guys to see in real time what it's like to try these problems. And sometimes it doesn't work out, and that's okay. It's just like doing your homework, right? It's what happens when we do math. We try things, we take a risk. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So I've got the derivative of tangent, we know that's secant squared. And the derivative of a constant times x is our constant. And now I've got a constant 1 fourth, and I'm multiplying by the derivative of sine of 2x. Derivative of sine of, of an angle is cosine of that angle, times the derivative of the inside. Don't forget to add c. So we've got this now. Uh, 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. Oh, whoops, excuse me. Derivative of c is 0. I did not know what I said just a minute ago. Um, but in the name of transparency, in the name of practice, I want, I want to correct myself. Derivative of a constant is 0, and I don't know why I wrote a plus c here. Um, so just scribble it out. It's a reminder to myself not to do that again if I ever look back at my work. Okay, I'm hoping to prove, I want to show that this derivative is equal to the original integrand, which was tangent to the fourth over secant squared. Uh, you may have taken trigonometry and thought to yourself, I'm never going to use those trigonometric um, identities. When am I ever going to have to prove that something is equal to something else like that? Um, generally, you don't have to, uh, but in this case, it, it, it comes in handy. It might be exactly what we want to do. Okay, so let's see if we can do that here. Um, I notice I've got this. Um, I think I want to split up that negative... Uh, 3 halves because I know that secant squared minus 1 is tangent so I'm just going to write that negative 3 halves as minus 1 minus 1 half so that's a good sign and that means that's tangent of x 
And do you guys recognize the identity right here? There's another identity. Oh, excuse me, I wrote tangent of x. It's tangent squared x. Let me rewrite this a little differently. Um, let's factor out a negative 1 half. So negative 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2x. Do you guys see that that is um, negative sine squared of x using our Pythagorean or our power reducing formula backwards? You have the 1 minus cosine of double the angle. So you have to have half the angle, um, and it's a sine squared. And this, I think I remember when we were taking antiderivatives. Yeah, there it is right there. We did a lot of algebraic manipulation or like trigonometric identity manipulation of our integrand to get to this point, and then we were able to take the antiderivative from there. Um, so we're back here, and our goal is to get back up to that tangent to the fourth um, over secant squared. Now, I could reverse engineer it by just going through my old steps, but I don't think I want to. I think I'd rather uh, do this a little differently. Um, so I'm going to remind myself what tangent is. Tangent is sine over cosine. I've got that. Um, I guess I could factor out a sine squared. Or I could multiply by cosine squared over cosine squared, get a common denominator. Let's try that. So I've got sine squared um, minus sine squared x times cosine squared. All this is over cosine squared. There we go. All right. I know I can reduce that, but if I reduce that, I'm going to end up back here and back here, and I don't want that. So I got a common denominator, um, sine squared. Um, these two terms have sine squared in common, so I can factor that out. All right. Sorry about that. And now we're here, and we know 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared from our Pythagorean identity. Hmm. So I've got sine to the fourth over cosine squared. And what I'm trying to prove is that this is equal to tangent to the fourth over secant squared. Now, in order to get a tangent to the fourth, let's do this. I'd need a sine to the fourth over cosine to the fourth. So that's okay. I'll just multiply by that. Now, if I just multiply by that, that would not be illegal. I would not be proving anything. All I would be doing is manipulating something through multiplication, and it's an entirely different function now, and it would, it would not, not be okay. But if I multiply by this, and I also multiply by its reciprocal, that is totally legal. So now I've got sine to the fourth over cosine to the fourth, which is tangent to the fourth. And I've got tangent to the fourth times cosine squared, but cosine squared is one over secant squared. So if I multiply straight across, I get tangent to the fourth over secant squared. It checks out. So the derivative of our antiderivative through a bunch of trig identities eventually got us back to the original integrand. Um, so we know we did it right. Now, this may or may not be the most straightforward way to do this. There might be a slicker way. There might be a more elegant way. Um, and you'll see as you do more math that um, you're not always going to take the most elegant approach and perhaps I didn't um, or perhaps this is a good approach um, I'm not really sure I haven't thought about the most elegant approach to this problem um, but I just want to encourage you um, this is what the process is like um, you start with something and you just start messing around with identities facts that you know um, and start 
putting those truths together in unique ways and see if something comes out that can get you a little bit further than um, where you were before. Um, and it turned out to work out for us this time. Uh, so that is uh, the last guideline for powers of secant and tangent. Um, yes, if all else fails, here's the guideline. Write tangent of your angle and secant of your angle in terms of sine and cosine. And you might use um, the identities or the list of rules for powers of sine and cosine, or you might end up here like we did, and those don't work. So you just start using Pythagorean identities um, and manipulating until you get to a point where you can finally take the antiderivative. Um, that worked out for us. Um, and again, there may have been a slicker way, uh, but this is the way I came up with on the spot. Um, and you'll see too, as you do more math, um, that sometimes the way you went, um, it, if it gets you to the answer, that's progress. Then later as you go back through, you can see what steps were redundant, which steps um, were just going off on a tangent, uh, but um, bum, uh, that didn't really lead you any closer to the solution. And you can clean it up and you can make it um, slicker and nicer and more elegant um, and show like the fastest, nicest, most beautiful way to get to the solution. Um, but getting a solution is always a great start. Thanks, guys.